is Introduction to Java Programming and Data Structures, Chapter 1, Programming Exercise 2. So in this exercise, we're going to display five messages. We're going to write a program that displays Welcome to Java five times. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to take the string Welcome to Java and print out the message five times onto the console. Now, if you remember from the previous exercise in the previous video or exercise one, we use the print method to print out this, uh, to print out a string onto the console. And we print out three different messages. But the thing that we noticed was that when we use the print method, number one, it print, if you print out multiple times, if you use a different system that out that print method every time, all of these strings will be on one line stuck together. And two, if you even if you space it out, all right, if you write welcome to Java and then you put it inside uh, the same quote inside the same print method, it won't be on a new line. So they'll all be in one single line, but spaced together. So that doesn't look good either. So what we could do from what we learned in the previous exercise is put him in a print line method. By putting it in a print line method, it will print out the string first, then it'll create a new line, which will allow the next string to print the message onto that line. But to make not make it similar to the previous exercise where you're kind of just doing the same exact thing, I want to teach one more thing in this exercise, in this video, and that is an intro to escape sequences. So I'm just going to mainly talk one kind of ex uh, escape sequence. There are quite a few, as we will see later, but my main focus is the slash n escape sequence, which is a, a, by definition, or the description of this slash n, is a character preceded by a backslash this is a backslash, is an escape sequence and has special meaning to a compiler. And what this slash n does is insert a new line in the text at this point. So let's take a look at that. Let's see how that works to our advantage when we're going to write it out. All right. So what we're going to do for me, I'm going to be using the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment IntelliJ, which uh, I already have a project created. Within the project, I have my source folder. And within the source folder, I have my Guan Kevin package. Within this, within this package contains another folder called chapter one. And that folder contains the programming exercise one class or Java file. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another Java class in this uh, package. And Java has no problem with that. You could create as many class as you need within that package. Now, when we're going to name this class, we should always follow a convention. Now, convention for Java states that uh, all class name should start with an uppercase letter followed by lowercase. So for me, I'm going to write programming exercise 02. Now, you should really, uh, if you're following convention, you should really lowercase this E2. All right, but for me, I'm not. It's not too important right now. Uh, but if I'm working with a team and I'm working with other people, I'm submitting submitting code onto GitHub onto other people's project. Take a look at what they're doing, how they're writing their class, how they're setting it up, how they're commenting their code, and follow it. That way, you will be uh, it will be organized and it uh, it will allow for better visual and uh, efficient when you efficiency when you're reading it all right so let's see so i have my java doc right here um this is programming exercise two display five messages and the reading the reason i'm writing this out right here is that when i'm coming back to this uh exercise i could take a look at my comment right here and I could read a little bit on it and say, okay, what is this? It is program exercise two, mm -hmm. and it's display five messages. All right, so that instantly allowed me to remember, okay, what this class is about, what this exercise is about. So that's something you should also do when you're writing your code. And let's see, today's date is 
the 10th. So let's see, 2018, 11, 10. All right, so that way I know when I know when I wrote version one of this code and I can always come back, update the date, update the version and improve from there. Now, one thing I didn't mention yesterday was that uh, um, a little more information about our class. Now, we always have to have a public class. This public class will always be the name of your uh, Java class. Now, if it isn't the same name, you will get an error. The public class has to be the same name as your file. So you see, hey, class programming exercise 022 is public, but it should be declared in a file name called program exercise 022 because in this class, there is a class, uh, it, it is named program exercise 02, not 022. So make sure you don't make that mistake. And if you do, now you know why. Now, another thing is you have to write your code inside a class. You can't write it outside. If you do, you're going to get an error message saying this will not work. All right. So the error message will say, hey, what's going on? This class right here should be inside a class, or at least if it's, or interface is expected. But don't worry about the interface for now. Just know that if you're writing a, your statements, your code, it has to be in a class. So if you move this and you put it right here, hey, it's in the class. Will it work now? So what error does it say now? It says it cannot resolve symbol print line. Now, as you can remember, um, the system class uses the, uh, it belongs to the lang package and you have to import that lang package. So if I do that, will this work? Well, why don't we give it a try? All right, so it's, we import uh, java.lang, lang is the package, and for class we're using a system. We close that out, we end it with a semicolon, right? You always have to end your code with semicolon. And wait, hold, hold on, it still doesn't fix this issue. So the main issue right now is that you should be writing this piece of code inside a method. So not all codes have to go inside method. Just know that for this, the printout should belong inside method. So we're going to remove that and we're going to write our method. Now the method we're going to write is the main method. The main method is the entry point to Java. That's where Java looks for the main method and then start your code, your class, your project from there, right? So we could write the public static void main string args. Now you might think, hey, this writing this all out, I mean, is there a faster way? This we have to write as quite a bit to write every single time. Now for IntelliJ, the awesome thing about IntelliJ is IntelliJ, the developer knows that you're always going to be writing this piece of code, this line right here, this method. So they gave us a little um, shorthand for it. So we could write P S V M, which is short for public static void main. We write that, we click enter and voila, we have our uh, main method ran for us right away. So that's just a quick shorthand, um, a little interest, interesting tidbit for your use. And now we could begin to write our system that out that print line. Now, uh, before I want to do that, or before I go ahead and do that, I want to remind myself, I want to write a little comment here to remind myself what I need to do. Now, my main goal here is to write a program that displays welcome to Java five times. So I'm going to write that as a comment right here. That way I could see it. I could go back to it easily to remind myself. Press enter. And here we go. We're going to write system dot out dot print welcome to Java. And there we go. We're done. All right. So that is that easy. But if I were to go back to my comment, I remember, hey, I have to write this actually five times. All right. No problem. It never specify how you want me to write it five times. I could write it any way I run or want to. So if I copy this, paste it here and paste it four more times, I will have welcome to Java five times. 
And now let's run this piece of code and let's take a look at and see how that looks like. So if we were to do that, it looks like this. Welcome to Java, welcome to Java, welcome to Java five times put together and we did what we need to do. Now, of course, that doesn't look good. There's no way I want to have something like that. So why don't I space it? If I space it out, right, you could edit your string. You could do what you want to do in here. It is up to you to show how you want to display it. There we go. Now, if we were to run that again, it will look slightly better, right? So we have welcome to Java 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, could we do better? For sure we can. Why don't we use the print line method? So we're going to remove all of that. Actually, before we use the print line method, why don't we try something else? So here's the thing. What happened if I press enter right here? Boom. There's a plus sign right here. That is short for uh, addition if you're doing arithmetic. But when you're doing it, when you're putting it between two um, two strings right here, it's actually short for concatenation, right? You're actually concatenating, which means to put the string or combine it together. So it lets Java know when it's running your program, it lets it know that, oh, you actually, this string right here actually is being combined with this string over here, this entire string. You could do it as many times as you want. This allow you to easily visualize your code, right? You could easily say, oh, hey, I do have it written five times. One, two, three, four, five. That looks pretty nice. Hey, I wonder what happened if I do something like this and then I run the program. All of this is in a new line. So therefore, it must display like it does here, right? It must display something like this. Well, why don't we take a look? If we do it like this, will it display like how I have it display on my slide right here. So we're gonna run the program and we're gonna take a look. Now, when we run it, let's see, moment of truth and oh no, it turns out it doesn't do that at all. It sees that as if it is stuck together like we originally did it. So what happened? What What's going on? Why is it like this? Well, like I said, right? All this does is simply say combine this string or this quote and whatever message is in here with this right here. Since there's no space, you're not going to see any space between right here too. So if you do put a space and then you run it, you will see a space right here. Welcome to Java. Did I? Oh, this is the first one. This is the first string. All right. So that's my logical error. I made a mistake on my own. And as you can see, voila, there's the space. So it display this first, the first string, and then create a little space, and there we go. So um, all of this does is just for you to visualize your code a little easier, which is a good thing, right? It allows you to see things clearer. It's much easier to visualize, but that's not what we want. What we want is put this in a new line. So what we could do is use the system.out.println method to write all of this in a new line. Now, since I already showed you how to do that, how that worked in the previous video, and I don't want to repeat myself for this part again, I want to make this video a little shorter than it was uh, in the previous video. I'm going to jump straight to teaching you another little trick. And that is why I showed you the escape sequence with the slash n. It is a character preceded by a backslash, is an escape sequence, and has special meaning to the compiler. By definition, description for the slash n character right here, the sequence, this escape sequence, is to insert a new line in the text at this point. So this at this point, it might seem a little confusing, so I'm gonna go slow with that. Now, where do you wanna put it? Where would I wanna put it? If I were to display it, uh, if I want to display uh, it as something like this, and it says it will create a new line in the text at this point, that means I will want to display the message welcome to Java first, then create the slash n uh, or the escape sequence right there. So where in this code would you do that? Well, for me, I would do that right here, slash n. And as simple as that, you 
uh, have created a new line. So let's take a look. And there we go. It says, welcome to Java. And then that slash n, that escape sequence works right here. You don't see a slash n right here. You just see that right here, it started a new line. It forced all this string right after the slash n to be written in a new line. So that makes it really nice. So where you put the slash n is where that, um, that new line will begin. So if you put it at the beginning, at this point right here, and you were to run it, you see that it'll create a new line first, then it'll write welcome to Java, then it'll create a new line, and then it'll write out everything you need. But I don't really want that. What I want is to put it in the back. So I'm gonna do it right here, slash n, slash n, slash n, and I'm done. I don't need to write anymore. I could if I want to. Uh, personally, I like it like this, right? And of course, you could put your slash n you don't have to touch this um, uh, this character right here. You could put a little space right here. You could put as much space as you need. You don't have to, but you could, all right? And you could follow up with more words, right? Or more characters. So let's take a look. I'm gonna run that, and then you see it is now on a new line. Now remember, how you write your string affects how it's displayed. Now, right here, I actually wrote a few, um, uh, I believe it's called white spaces, right? You don't see it here when it's displayed, but it's actually over there. So let me highlight it, and there you go. You see that? It's actually uh, on the console. So let me highlight the whole thing, and you actually won't see it. So you have to uh, specifically go to it, right? So right here, I only create one white space. So you see it right there in this uh, space, I didn't create any white space, so I don't see any. So how you write your uh, string or uh, in how you create your string inside the print method is reflected onto the console. So you gotta make sure you don't make that mistake if you uh, don't intend to. All right, so that will be it for this exercise. Once again, what we learned so far is to utilize the print method however you like. You could also use the print align method to display all five uh, string, or you could use the escape sequence slash n. Now, just so you know, this isn't the only escape sequence Java has. Java has multiple escape sequences. We just use only using one of them so far. There's different one that does different kinds of um, tasks within your string, all right? And we will definitely go on to you be using other, these other in the future, but for now, one at a time, just the slash n. And of course, just a tidbit, remember, you have to write your code inside the class within these brackets, all right? And when you finish writing uh, your, bra your code, make sure the brackets are closed make sure to always add a semicolon. And of course, uh, don't have to, but re really recommend it is to comment your code so you know to, um, so you know what you're doing when you go back to it. And of course, if you ever need this code, it is available on GitHub, all right? So for now, I'm just gonna simply say, um, added programming exercise two. Okay, all right. And that'll be it for this exercise.